the last time you had to introduce yourself, what labels did you use? Did you talk about who you are, what you do, what you love? All of these labels can be fun. President Nelson even said that it can be a great way to describe ourselves, but they can also be divisive and restrictive. Today, we're going to talk about the most important labels and how we can label up to build bridges of belonging. Hi, and welcome to Magnify. We are a podcast that helps keep general conference top of mind without adding to your to-do list. I'm your host, Katherine Davis, a mom, a seminary teacher, and a big football fan who loves God. And I am so excited to learn and be inspired with you. We know life is busy and we are here to lighten the load by bringing you weekly spiritual reminders that will leave you feeling a little bit better than before. M.M. Martin joins me on today's episode. M.S. says she prefers hugs to handshakes, sweet over salt, and travel by the sea. One of her superpowers is that she is great at making connections and friendships, and I can't wait to hear more about her thoughts today. I am so grateful that you're here. This is going to be so fun. I am thrilled about this conversation. Well, actually, I want to ask you a question. Yes. You said you love sweet, favorite sweet of all time. You could only choose one. Ooh, anything cake or cakey. I love the soft sweetness. It's It tastes like home. Aww. Okay. Well, besides being the wife of a YSA bishop, you were recently called to serve on the General Advisory Council for Relief Society. Say that three what? times fast. <laughs> I, I know. I don't think I could. <laughs> what has that been like for you? And what are your responsibilities in that calling? You know, similar to my first response in that it feels like home. It feels soft and sweet. I love the opportunity to meet new people, though I firmly believe I've never met a stranger. I come home from a shopping trip and I've collected three or four new friends and my husband's like, oh my Lanta, you and your collection. (laughs) But that's what I feel like. I feel like I meet a true new sister everywhere I go. And I love it. It's so sweet. I think that would be the best part or the biggest blessing of that calling is that you get to meet so many people. So as you're meeting so many people, what helps you have a better understanding and, and what helps you see everybody as a child of God? Seeing them, looking them in the eyes, seeing their heart, their concerns, the things that we wear on our sleeves and just connecting with that. It's more than just, Hey, it's, how are you? Who are you? Tell me, share, let's, let's connect. And we do. And that just opens up hearts, opens up minds, and it leaves you feeling so much of the divine because when you share heart to heart, you're sharing him, you're sharing in his spirit. Well, have there been a couple of things or a couple of tips that have helped you be able to connect on that level? You know, it's so hard to be vulnerable, but trusting that that part of your heart is sacred in this space with that person in that moment is really, really at the, at the heart of it all. Um, and just being willing to listen vulnerably and openly and trust that you can also share in the same space. And heart to heart, you feel that sincerity. And people welcome that and they want to receive that as well. Well, one thing you said, which I think is super important, is that we need to be quicker to love than to judge. Yes. (laughs) You know, I think we all have our radars on for judging quick, fast, and we need to. That's a human instinct. I need to know whether I can make it across the street in time enough to beat the car or not, right? I need to know if I've got enough chicken to go for that extra guest who's coming over. We all need to make judgments all day, every day. Um, But I think we really easily get caught up in the human judgments of, oh, she's wearing that. So she must feel A, B, and C. Or, oh, he said that. He must be thinking X, Y, and Z. And we make these quicker judgments about each other that are more often than not incorrect. You know, for instance, like nine or so years ago, uh, my stake president was newly called 
to serve in the leadership for several units, and I'm part of them. And he stands up, as his name is called, and I look and I think, I've never seen this person before. He doesn't look very presidential. Um, <laughs> I don't think he's the one. Because, of course, I've got the measuring stick on what's presidential, <laughs> what's righteous, because, you know, I'm all of those things and more, right? And we all do that. <laughs> but... You know, I, and I even leaned over to my husband. I said, who in the world is that? <laughs> I'd never seen him before in a hall or anything. And, you know, turns out he actually was serving and living in my building. But nevertheless, you know, I make this quick judgment and think he ain't it. <laughs> but in humility and the days that came later, as I perfectly thought, well, new season, new service. Let's let's get to know this person. Let's think about he, I'm sure he's feeling I'm not it either. <laughs> but as we, you know, built bonds and built relationships, I learned uh, through a great leader or two in my life that sometimes leadership is lonely. And so I learned a little bit about him and his wife and his family and would engage them in conversation and, and, fi and found out when their birthdays were and kind of connected with them and found ways to get to know this person who I thought I knew uh, just by looking at. And as Time went on, you know, I we built a great rapport, our families love and connect together. I ended up serving as his State Relief Society president. And a few weeks ago, we were all in the temple supporting a different sister, uh, receiving uh, those blessings of the temple. And his wife leaned over and said the sweetest thing, you know, I look around this room and I'm surrounded with some of my favorite people. And for her to say that and for me to be included in that was so tender. Uh, and I think that's what we all want. And what an opportunity I would have missed if I let my judgments take over. And this friendship, this connection, this love that we've built over the years, what missed blessings. And I think we all have that opportunity to love more than ju and judge less, to bring in those blessings and let them change us. <laughs> because that's really, truly what happened for me in that instance. Well, judging is faster. Of course. We can judge pretty quick. and. We always, it seems to be what we fall back on and it's easier, mm. I think, but we miss out on so much. And I actually had this, such a unique thing happen today when, as I was thinking about our conversation, I have a student in one of my classes and I very rarely feel like it takes very long to break through walls. I feel like I'm pretty good at breaking through walls and getting to know teenagers and, and making a connection, whether they want to be in my class or not. I feel like, you know, I, I, that has always been something that Heavenly Father has blessed me with. Well, I have this student who so clearly does not want to be there so clearly. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about it and I will talk to her and I will say hi. And she completely ignores me all the time. She just kind of glares at me. And today I tried to say hi, probably like four or five different times. And she would not even acknowledge my existence. The bell rang and I was super discouraged because I thought, okay, just be rude. Okay. You're so rude. You're so disrespectful. And the bell rang and she left out of class. She left class and I went up to the board and I was re erasing the board. And I clearly had this thought where I, where I thought, you know, this thought came to me. Catherine, you in this moment are me to her, mm. that you are representing God and mm. I am her. How many times have I shut him out? How many times have I ignored him? How many times have I like gone about my day? Mm. And does he ever get flustered? Mm. Do his feelings ever get hurt? Mm. Does he ever get mad or upset? Mm. I just think he's like, okay, you're not ready. I'll try again tomorrow. Mm. Mm. And then I, I kind of meekly thought, okay, Heavenly Father, I'll try again tomorrow. Mm. And I think I'm so quick to, I was so quick to say, well, she obviously doesn't want to be here and she hates me and she mm. hates everything about me and let it hurt me rather than try and see her through God's eyes and just understand, okay, I'll try again tomorrow. Mm. I love that through God's eyes because he has the perfect lenses and he sees mm -hmm. what we don't say. He sees what we try to hide because he knows and he understands the undercurrent of the hurt she's carrying. 
um, you know, in the, the case of my state president, he understands perhaps yeah. the fears and the, the trepidations and the inadequacies he's feeling as I'm here judging, thinking <laughs> that ain't the one, he's not it. And yet the Lord still is willing to reach us, meet us and reach us where we're at and try again. I love that. So what can we do to make sure that we're not missing out on some of these connections? You know, being conscious of it, right? Uh, you know, again, human need, need to make judgments, need to assess. But when it comes to people, we have to put love first. You know, it's interesting how quickly we can kind of be, again, collector of things. And sometimes, you know, it's a badge of honor to have a, a affiliation with X group or you know, I've all my life been this. And so let me continue to thread that through. And those are important things, right? It's nice to, to be on team short or, you know, on affiliated with X group and, and all the accolades, but central before any of those collected identities is our soul identity with our heavenly father and having that rooted in us as the primary purpose of who we are and why we are here as children of God, that is essential. And then we can be enhanced by the label of mother, friend, sister, uh, you know, black woman. Then we can, you know, do all of these things that are inherent to our purpose if we understand who we are connected to. And those labels then aren't, aren't inhibiting, but they're empowering. And so it's really centralizing ourselves in the Savior, in our identity, to our Father, and then letting those labels lead us to better. I am fascinated by your thoughts on this, because was there a particular experience that helped you understand your unique DNA that contributed to your identity? You know, I must attribute first my my fantastic faithful parents. My mom, member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, my dad, faithful Christian, and they always from day one for me taught me by example and by text that you are a princess, you are a daughter of God. Always knew that. And then the church comes along and enhances that and helps me to understand truly that my spiritual DNA is heavenward. And that then helps me to feel like, oh, wow, I'm a beautiful daughter of God with this awesome Nigerian heritage, beautiful brown skin, intelligence, and all of these other things that, again, help me see my life as a child of God, as such a divine birthright with all of these other great adjectives that make me the marvelous Ahmed that I am or that make you, Catherine, the amazing person that you are, right? And so I think I just was really blessed from the beginning to have wonderful parents who lay that foundation and then life continued to enhance it through the experiences, my own and observing others. Well, I think the world uses labels to divide us mm, and yes. they can be so divisive and, divisive. and I see that all the time, even when we introduce ourselves. Like I'm Catherine and I'm this, I'm, you know, I play soccer, I play tennis, I play football. I, we associate with things that we do and mm. you are kind of talking so much more about how it can be an and, right? Like I, I want to know how it contributed or how it en enhanced your divine DNA, your beautiful black skin, as you said, how mm. did that enhance your divine DNA? Yeah, I love that, 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 that question, because I think you're right. It's so easy for differences to be derogatory, but they yeah. really can be, uh, again, enhancing, empowering. And so, you know, there may be people who may think, oh, you, you know, they may have feelings about Black folks or, or what that association can mean. But on the flip side, I love it. I love my heritage. It makes me want to know who and why the God who made me 
did so. And so it only drives me deeper into that divine identity and the brilliance of my uniqueness in that difference. You know, I think a lot of times we try to say, oh, there's no difference between us. We're all human. And yes, we are. And we are all divine children of the same God. Yet the differences should not be dividing us. They only turn us more towards one another and finding experience and connection in that nature that is unique and divine. And those things, again, just deepen my love for God who created me in this beautiful skin and these unique experiences to be more like him. And I think as we think on how we become more like him, it's in learning more about ourselves, our heritage, more than just the spiritual heritage, but what is our actual heritage? Who are we? Who did we come here to be? What does that look like? And how do these talents enhance my divine identity? So how do we break through the divisiveness of labels? Again, it is such a conscious effort. Um, okay. You know, I think about my day-to-day -day work in the space of equity, diversity, and inclusion. And just in any journey, it has intention. You know, I love to travel the world, um, but I have intention. I have an itinerary. I have, you know, packages and, and clothing and things that I bring with me to make that journey successful and comfortable. And so it's the intention of prayerfully seeking, Lord, I don't want labels to hinder me. How can I label up, if you will, and look up and consider how this enhances me and makes me better? And so with that intention, then you start to look at life differently. And I'm able to see Catherine, the griller extraordinaire who like can teach me some things, right? Like, let's do dinner. Let's, let's make this happen. Label up. <laughs> I love that idea. Like mm -hmm. how, how would you describe labeling up? I like to say that God is multi-purpose, right? And that he, you know, he may send you to school to study economics because he's got a great intention and a great career path for you. And he's also got a spouse along the way, or he's also got a great best friend you're going to meet in this pursuit, right? There's multi-purposes for that effort. And so again, as divine beings, we are multifaceted. And so it's not just that I'm a wife, I'm an auntie, I'm a sister, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a chemist, and you're so much more. And not that that's a bad thing or a good thing, there's more things. You know, I'm a woman, I'm a short woman, I'm a short black woman. <laughs> you know, there's so much more that tells a story and it makes it a 360 as opposed to maybe 180. And so I get to see more of you and know more completely who you are. So how does being a short black woman, as you said, <laughs> how does that identity or that label help you lean in to your divine DNA or lean into labeling up? Well, then I'm able to look eye to eye, at least with my short girls. And I under we, we get it, right? We understand what it's like to need longer hands, right? I, and so I know what it's like to literally be overlooked. <laughs> and so huh. I walk in those shoes and I see you, my short sister, in a different way. I, I, I know what it's like, beautiful black girl, to not need as much suntan lotion, right? <laughs> or sunscreen, rather. Like, and, and so we see each other differently. Like, I know from my experiences a little bit more about yours. And maybe, maybe they're not the same. Maybe they're not cookie cutter. But I'm able to, to appreciate whether it's in the space of race and ethnicity or vertical challenges. Like I understand a little bit more about life because I've lived it. And my experiences, which make me unique, they don't limit me. They only enhance my understanding and my experiences and my connection in community, even if you don't look like me. Sounds like they help us build bridges of belonging. Yes, exactly. Exactly. We then are able to connect in ways that, yeah, maybe you're tall, but like you also know what it's like to, to not have all of the things in your size. Right. And so, you know, from a different perspective, you know what it's like to, ah, 
I'm missing out on something or someone wasn't thinking enough of me to do X or Y or Z. And so, yeah, I'll, I'll never know what it's like to be 6'5", but I, I know what it's like sometimes to feel like, oh, <laughs> you didn't see me completely. You missed me. And again, the opportunities and experiences that life gives us in those lanes, they build bridges where we feel like I belong. <laughs> I get it. You get me and I get you. Yeah, maybe not identically, but humanity, I see. you. So what can we do in our faith communities, in our wards, in our stakes to lead out and help build bridges of belonging? You know, I feel like the theme for our conversation is intention, but it's it, it really does take the prayerful intention to recognize, okay, yeah, you're not a sure black woman, but like you again have walked walks in spaces where maybe you have felt marginalized or you're really excited and you hold on to some great heritage pieces. And so wow, when Black History Month comes around, you appreciate like what that means for you. Uh, you know, and again, yeah, maybe you don't have the same identical heritage, but ultimately we all do have the same spiritual heritage. And so how do we build on that to build bridges of understanding? How do you let the space be open for me to share with you my experiences? And maybe you can't empathize, but spirit to spirit, you can sympathize. You can hear and understand and appreciate. We are the same more than we're not in many ways. Has somebody been able to do that for you? You know, again, professionally and personally, the opportunity to sit in the space of the work that I do that literally, I, I feel like I'm a bridge builder <laughs> as you know, I look for ways to meet the needs of underserved or overlooked persons and communities. And so I think of the great leaders I've had in my life um, and young women and even professionally ways that people have seen me and not allowed differences to divide us. Oh, I don't know what it's like to come from the East Coast or I don't know what it's like to be vertically challenged, but that has only just, you know, opened up a door for, well, tell me, what is it like to not have, you know, the arms to reach to that second shelf? Tell me what it's like to, to have a, a, an East Coast mindset in this West Coast life, like opening the doors for those understandings. And I, I've been so blessed to have people who are sensitive to that. And so then it in turn has made me someone who's willing to hear your experiences, to create space for you to speak your, your voice and your, your truths that help enhance us all. That idea of being a bridge builder, when you said, I'm a bridge builder, I think we all want to be bridge builders. And maybe we're just not quite sure how especially when maybe it's a different path or a, or a different background. And so what, can you help with some practical things that we can do to help build bridges? You know, it's a common quip, but we do have two ears and one mouth. And we also have a big heart, hopefully. And there's room to listen, to listen with love, to be willing to learn that you didn't know some things to, to admit that there's opportunities to grow even at age 20 or 40 or 50. There's still opportunities to well, let's not love. stop at 50. Because <laughs> life does not end <laughs> when we hit 50. Oh, I hope not. That keeps on going. 95. Or okay, thank shout you. out to President Nelson. 99. <laughs> There's still opportunities <laughs> to learn and to grow. And so lean into that. Uh, you know, President Nelson has called on us to be different, to act, to abandon attitudes of racism, to embrace the space of celestial thinking and, and divine discipleship. So let's act on the things that we learn through a lens of love. It may not be universal, but it's certainly going to lead us to better places than we were before. I think one of the things that helps me listen is to be curious. Mm. Ask, ask away. That's how we learn. That's how we discover. And, and while we ask someone to be vulnerable, the other side is that we're willing to, to also give into that space. 
and be willing to to share some things and ha- and have some sacred space there that may not be comfortable but is certainly an opportunity to to draw us closer to Christ to the author and finisher of faith and the experiences that allow us to to build bridges to bond um and to come closer to him because ultimately these things in our path and purpose draw us back to him. I love that idea of just leaning into a conversation and being curious and asking questions and learning that our divine DNA unites. It does not have to be divisive. Amen. So as we end this conversation, which I'm so grateful for, because I hope that we can all be a little better. I hope we can all be a little more curious, that we can all level up our labels, turn to the divine to receive our labels. But as we end this conversation, what would be your small and simple challenge for us to be able to be these bridge builders? I truly believe that in our heart of hearts, people want to understand. They want to be bridge builders too. And they will see and feel the sincerity of your soul when you ask in curious kindness. You know, people sense that. They know when you're sincere. They know when that curiosity is coming from a place of Christ and not from a a, a place of hurt or intended harm. People can feel and know that. And if they respond in a place that's harmful or hurt, it's because they've been hurt before. And so again, being willing to patiently lean into loving them, giving them a good experience this time, so that they have hope in humanity again. I love I love that line right there. Curiosity coming from a place of Christ. Amen. Well, I am just hoping as people listen to this conversation that a certain person comes to mind or a group of people that you think of, I need to be a bridge builder in my relationship with this individual or with this group. And I would love to hear what people do to talk less and listen more. I would love to hear that too. Please share your ideas in the comments in the socials. We'd love to hear more about what you're doing 